Coca-Cola stock was just hit with its second downgrade in as many days. Blame the pandemic. There is probably no company more important to the history of the American South than the Coca-Cola Company, New York Stock Exchange, KO. The Coca-Cola Company, KO, is one stock that has been resilient in the recent months, despite the headwinds poised by the coronavirus pandemic. In this video, we will tell you why you should own Coca-Cola stock in 2021 and beyond. Number six, Coca-Cola in 2021 beyond. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic slammed Coca-Cola's business, shutting down major events and restaurants and crushing soda demand. The March 2020 pandemic sell-off sent Coca-Cola shares all the way down to as low as $36.27, its low point of the past five years. Since then, Coca-Cola has struggled to regain traction in a socially distracted world. Coca-Cola shares made it back up to as high as $54.93 in early 2021, before pulling back to around $50. Ultimately, Coca-Cola investors who bought five years ago and held have generated a modest profit. In fact, $1,000 in Coca-Cola stock bought in 2016 would be worth about $1,373 today, assuming reinvested dividends. Looking ahead, analysts are expecting Coca-Cola to continue to recover in the next 12 months. The average price target among the 22 analysts covering the stock is $56.50, suggesting 12.7% upside from current levels. Number 5. A Rebound Ahead Coke's business is closely tied to the freedom that consumers have to attend in-person entertainment events, and so it is likely to stay pressured until the COVID-19 threat is over. Management also warned investors to expect volatility given all the uncertainty about future outbreaks and shaky global economic growth trends. Sales are still trending lower through early February, executives explained, yet Coke is feeling confident enough to reinstate its annual outlook after pulling that forecast early last year. Quincy and his team believe organic revenue will rise by high single digits in 2021, with growth accelerating as the year progresses. Heading into the second half of the year, Coke should benefit from the spread of vaccines, and from a comparison with prior year sales periods that included sharp sales slumps starting in mid-2020. The progress management made at cutting costs will amplify those sales gains and allow core earnings to rise by around 10% this year. If that happens, investors should expect to see Coke ramp up its stock buyback spending again and perhaps issue a bolder dividend hike for 2022. Coke issued an unusually wide range of predicted operating results for the new fiscal year, saying it's not clear how quickly vaccines will begin freeing up consumers to return to normal movement patterns. The fiscal first quarter will be its toughest of the year since COVID-19 impacts didn't grow significant until after that period in 2020. It's highly likely that the beverage giant will achieve growth as compared to last year's 9% drop, but the scale and timing of that recovery won't be clear until later in the year. Number 4. KO Stock Can Coca-Cola be more? The task of trying to make Coca-Cola more than that fell to James Quincy in 2017. He follows a line of non-American KO CEOs, stretching back almost 20 years to the troubled reign of Doug Ivester. Quincy has worked around the edges of Coca-Cola with smaller can sizes, brand extensions, and moves beyond sugar. Even carbonation is now said to have negative health effects. As such, Quincy has turned to healthier drinks, with plans to buy a controlling interest in the sports drink maker Body Amore, for example. Now the CEO says he wants to make big bets, like a reboot of Coke Energy and Coke Zero Sugar. Quincy said recently the company has 11 of these thoughtful and intelligent experiments lined up for 2021, which could comprise 20% of its global pipeline. 
The pandemic hit KO hard, with sales down 11% and net income down over 13% in 2020. But Coke maintained its dividend and even increased it by a penny this month. KO stock now yields 3.28%, compared to a 30-year bond yielding nearly 2.4%. Number 3. Rising Optimism Quincy's careful innovation and the slow fade of the pandemic have gotten some attention from analysts. RBC Capital Markets, which downgraded the stock in January, upgraded it to outperform in March with a new price target of $60. However, a big danger that remains for Coke is taxes. The U.S. tax court ruling covering the year 2007 through 2009 could mean a bill of $3.3 billion, but that plan could be lessened by provisions in the 2017 tax cut, which could also reduce Coke's tax burden going forward. Coca-Cola remains one of the strongest American brands in the world market, ranked even above Disney, according to Brand Finance. The London-based brand evaluation company estimates the value of Coca-Cola brand at $33.2 billion almost twice that of Pepsi. But it's that comparison to Pepsi that's also hurting KO stock the most. The problem with that analysis is that, as I noted above, the two companies are now very different. Pepsi is now a food company, its numbers driven by Quaker Oats and Frito-Lay. Conversely, Coke has avoided investments outside its niche for over 30 years, since selling Columbia Pictures to Sony, New York Stock Exchange, SNE, for $3.4 billion in 1989. Number 2. Factors to Drive Growth in 2021 Driven by a shift in consumer behavior due to the coronavirus pandemic, Coca-Cola has been witnessing a splurge in e-commerce, with the growth rate of the channel doubling in many countries. It has been accelerating investments to expand presence in this channel compared with the pre-crisis levels. In North America, it is investing in e-commerce to support retailers and meal delivery services, shifting towards fit-for-purpose package sizes for online sales and redeploying consumer and trade promotions towards digital. Its digital partnerships with restaurants and aggregators to optimize menu resulted in a four-point increase in attachment rates, which digital commerce retail sales have more than doubled year-to-date, outpacing the category. It is also strengthening consumer connections and further piloting numerous different digital-enabled initiatives through fulfillment methods be it B2B to home or B2C platforms in many countries to capture online demand for at-home consumption. The company saw favorable results initially and is looking to scale similar partnerships with more customers. The company's focus on accelerating expansion in digital channel is likely to be sustainable, positioning it for long-term growth. Moreover, Coca-Cola is known for streamlining its brand portfolio from time to time. It has been on track with its ambition to create a winning portfolio with global, regional, and local brands that have the strongest potential to grow their customer bases and drive profits in the long term. However, the sudden occurrence of the pandemic led to it to accelerate its already underway brand restructuring efforts earlier this year. Consequently, it outlined plans to slash its 430 master brands portfolio by 50%, retaining about 200 brands. As part of these efforts, the company has so far excited some of its underperforming brands like Tab, Zico Coconut Water, Diet Coke, Feisty Cherry, and Odwalla Juices. The company expects to use the savings from these brand exits to provide flexibility and support investments in its growing brands like Minute Maid, Simply Juices, Topo Chico Hand Sanitizer, Coca-Cola Energy, and AHA Sparkling Water. Number 1. The Bottom Line Despite the effects of the coronavirus pandemic on the company's away-from-home business, we believe the aforementioned strengths and investments position it well for continued growth in 2021, 
This is further supported by a momentum score of B and an expected long-term earnings growth rate of 4.2%. Coke is instinctively conservative in the best possible sense. It places intense focus on what it does best, that is, making water portable and selling it at the highest possible price in the greatest variety of forms. That's what the company has been about for almost a century since a dispute between bottlers and syrup makers caused it to focus on the question of water quality. Pure water is the key to making every Coca-Cola taste the same. It's also the key to making sure it's healthy. Quincy still faces challenges on the health front, but he has also shown he will protect and even raise Coke's dividend. That's why you buy KO stock. Ignore the price and go for the yield. I would say Coke is a good and safe long-term investment. There has been some concern because people seem to be going away from syrupy soft drinks and going more for healthier alternatives. However, Coke is a strong brand and I don't see it as a product that could die in my lifetime. Let me put it to you this way. There is not really any place in the entire world where you cannot walk into a store and buy a can of Coca-Cola. If KO meets the parameters of your rule-based investing and trading plan and the metrics of the chart do as well, then there would be no reason for you not to execute a block of it. It also pays a handsome 3% dividend. Did you know that Warren Buffett is the single largest shareholder of KO in the world? He owns 400 million shares. Do the math on his dividends and you get the picture of just how good of a stock it is. Do let us know in the comment what you think of Coca-Cola stock. Please subscribe to the Stock Advisor. Thanks for watching.